But to go from tragedy with a teammate to losing your first match quite badly to somehow making it to the finals and somehow winning it all, no one in their right minds should have expected that. There's so many parts of the story that you're gonna like always remember. Their actual performances in the qualifiers were great. And a lot of that was Gunless's performances. Pierce is just, obviously he's a beast. He's a really good respawn player. He's also good at search too, but I think his respawn prowess is like really top tier. He's been a top tier player for a long time now. And I think the biggest thing that he brought to our team was like extra communication. He has like probably the best comms in the league, realistically. Like I, I can't really think of anyone who's close and he has really good awareness and team play. So he definitely brought a lot to the team. I think we were all just extremely bummed that we're about to lose Pierce, one of the biggest like in-game leaders. And we knew that it was going to take a toll on our team at like that moment. It's sad enough that he's got a serious health condition that's preventing him from playing, let alone living a comfortable life at the moment, and he requires surgery. But then you feel for the team because they really were starting to look good. And then hearing that Spart was going to be the, the substitute, no one thought too much of Spart, in my opinion anyway. The last time we really saw Spart play was, I think, back in MW, and it wasn't particularly impressive. And through door number A is a player. Ooh, oh, he gets a kill. Okay, Spart comes down, 18 seconds. And he's filling in for Gunless. Like, yeah, of course this is going to be great. That was not how any of us felt. In Call of Duty, substitutes are a last resort. By every stretch of the imagination, you don't ever want to be going into a tournament without your full roster. You practice day in, day out in this very intimate, very intense game where everyone's roles are incredibly important and a weak link on the team will bring the whole squad down. So bringing in a substitute changes absolutely everything for a squad. And that is why our expectations were so, so low. Hello and welcome to the Rocker Major 2, coming at you live from the Mythic Lake Casino hotel in minnesota we got a lot of teams trying to hold that trophy at the end of the weekend the atlanta phases hopefully the hotel team the minnesota rockers for gorillas i mean you're in a tough spot right gunless not here spartan filling in everything against you going up against this boston breach team but do they have what it takes let's beat them let's take a look in los angeles gorillas but it's still at the moment boston breach all firing and all cylinders one last chance hugo's in but it's no good Methods with a three piece, and that is a shutdown for Boston Breeze. Going into that match, we knew it, it was kind of tough because we didn't have too much practice compared to these teams who have three, four, five months of practice. That second one's coming in as well. They know it's actually going to be in. TJ finds him. Got to go. And Boston is still getting it. Seam tries to dive. Methods gets the kill. Spartan Nero and Boston Breeze in the very final round of the control. Find B. They find the attack and they move forward here at the major with a clean three up. Definitely bummed, but at the end of the day, I think with Pierce and the opportunity, we were given a winner's bracket opportunity. It gave us that second chance in that loser's bracket run. Some conversations after that match, some people like weren't entirely comfortable. There were some things that we just like clearly weren't very good at as compared to like our last roster that had so much more practice. We kind of went into the tournament from the get-go with like the mindset of like, we have nothing to lose, but I think that really started to show once we were in loser's bracket. Talk about all these rotational gunfights, massive ones coming on the flip side of things. Spark wins the first one. He's got pressure on him, delivers and picks up too, but now the question is, can he read this link? The room spawns come through, turns Ooh! in the nick of time to get Damn! to Number four in a row, the new kid on the block making the big plays. Ultra still trying to battle their way forward while maintaining that P1 spawns, but this is it, boys. You've got to go now. Now it's starting to get a bit dicey. The final few moments. Is anyone there? No! LAG! To a rapturous applause here in Minnesota. They stay alive in a massive, massive victory there on Berlin. One thing that has also been great for your team is this gun called the Vault? My challengers team told me to like start using it, and then I used it for like two to three weeks before I got subbed in. I felt pretty comfortable with it, so I was like, screw it, might as well. And then it shredded online. You hit one headshot, like you just blow people away. Most interesting for me about the Vault though is not necessarily that it was their key to victory, but for me, what it did do is it influenced everyone else in the tournament massively. Everyone else pulled it out at some point. And when everyone else started using it and they weren't having as much success because they're not as well practiced with it as Spart was, that was the difference maker for me. It just becomes back to back to back. Every victory they get is a shock, is a surprise. All by himself! A 1v5 tosses out the shots with the red, but that will be it. There's not a hope in hell for the man to dive on it. There are eyes everywhere. If he can make something of this indeed, legendary performance it would be. But that is that. 
Lance is bombing, oh. starting to approach towards B. Spark finds that first blood, and this can get out of hand. They have full map control right now, controlling trenches. I've seen plants the bomb. Spark with another huge kill. As it all comes down to Caesar, it all comes down to Skies, and the new guy on the block comes out clutch again. The savior for the gorillas. They shouldn't be winning these matches. They shouldn't have this plot armor. They shouldn't have this like divine wind driving them through that tournament. Just trying to keep eyes on both and see how it plays out. I think he got spotted. I think he got the information. He did. He oh, got the spotted. Pistol, one more. It's all on Methods. He's down. He's down. He He's down. down. The dream is still alive. The Los Angeles Gorillas are in a date to a grand final. What? <laughs> It really was magic. Every series or every like rep we got warming up at the major was just only gonna help us. So once we kind of got further into the bracket, we knew all those reps, we're gonna play those maps again. We're gonna start getting stronger. The thing is my teams have always just performed better when there's more pressure on the line. Like I, even myself, I've played better in big time matches. I've played better at champs than I have at other events. And I think we proved that again this weekend. And I've proved that throughout my career. Baze, they're the big baddie of the Call of Duty League. They're the final boss. They are the most terrifying team on paper and in game and they're a squad who you can never ever count out ever and that's what makes them such a dangerous dangerous team the heady he is prepared for but here's the flank coming in from a scene looking for a second but he gets caught no spawn flips phase remain perfect but unfortunate timing as the man himself abisi brings him down oh, he's on the point another great kill going the way of phase top ringside trying to apply the pressure trying to get forward but there's no one to be found selium jumps out of nowhere cleans up two the members of lag now scrambling to get closer to the point five seconds for the win here in game number one and it is looked to be all phase all day it was not pretty at all so it's like holy cow i've seen some tweets a four five zero series like right away it might just be a an hour series it was an unbelievable clubbing and we were like all right that's where the grand finals is going here's gonna be a 5-0 we're gonna be all back in our beds at nine o'clock at the end of the day it's call of duty as long as we can like start like playing our game and as long as we can sign to like catch that momentum anything is possible 2v3 now a 1v3 arsities the lone defender of the bomb site. The two members now of LAG, will they fly into the fight? Here we go, they've done it. Here comes a big moment now, FaZe. This could be it, having to turn things around, but there's only three of them remaining. Asim, what an absolute champion he's been. He rips it, Sills gone, and another for Asim. That is unbelievable. Here we go, hold for the time. 25 for the win now for LAG. A deep breath, namaste baby. As we fly to the point, Slash is getting it done. We're on it. Oh my God. They've got it, done it. They've done the impossible. They've stolen the Tuscan. Chance and I had a game plan coming into this one. We were like, right, well, probably what's going to probably happen? FaZe is going to win the first map because Chance being the analytical mind he is, he looks at all the map records and he was like, it's going to go FaZe, maybe LAG, FaZe, 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 FaZe. We had a sort of sense of how we were going to tell the story and at what point we were going to like flip the switch and say, wow, okay. For me in particular, like once we took the Tuscan hard point, that's when I was like, thinking like, okay, now this definitely is ours to lose. Like we'll have a couple s ds coming up and like we felt so confident going into those. So I would say the Gava 2 control is probably the first step of that. Arsene's last one up, how long before he falls? He's trying to avoid the inevitable! I don't believe it! Minnesota's on their feet. History has just been made. LAG have now set the new record for search and destroy victories in a row. And not only that, Point. It was so important for them, I think, to win that search and destroy. Not just for the record, but ultimately for the championship. Honestly, there was no missteps. Like, not only are we going to win this, not only are we going to set the record, but we're doing it against FaZe. We're doing it against one of the best teams in the world. Admittedly, they lose the next game by, like, the narrowest of margins to push us to the fated Berlin, like, final map. And it's a spicy one at that. Here we go. Spot's about to run into a whole load of trouble. Here comes Simp and Arsties. There's one. Guns him. Second one's up. Simp's there. Now 1v2. Do see do Sim wins it. Staying alive. It's a technical 1v3 if you can get Slasher as well. No! Austin Lidigo, nerves of steel, brings him down. Gets the first round. Looking for the clearance now. Big coverage. Spark gets involved. Big fight there on a Sim wins it. Selium's up next. The shots are there. And it is beautiful tracking. But it's Hook on the point. Hook, the assassin. I believed in myself and my team's ability to win throughout the whole tournament. But of course, you know, you got to stay right in the middle, stay in your focus until it's over. That's kind of the mindset I had. It wasn't over until it's actually over. And I was just 
the moment. Sell with 30 seconds, stays alive. He thought Hook was gonna get the trade, so he tries to make the play call, but Hook actually readjusts. Only 20 seconds left on the clock, telling me you gotta go. He's gotta go, he's still trying to make something happen. Spa, the guns are up, the iron is there, and he pays the iron price! It is tournament point, LAG. Forward they go. I see with the first blood once again. Asti's desperately trying now to get involved. Here comes Hook once again with the kills. 2v4. Asim, he's done it. It is now all down to Selium. It's history in the making. One way or another. It was inevitable. The clock has struck 12. We cannot believe it. I was just like really happy for all the guys. Like they went into that tournament. They've come into the season as a whole with like a lot to prove each in their own individual ways. And so to see how much it meant to them after they were able to pull off like something so insane was like a really gratifying feeling. It was almost like a I told you so type moment for me. That's why I even stood up and like put my arms out like that. Like I've been telling people like I'm still really good at the game. They were literally calling for me to retire pretty much a couple weeks before that. I'm going to go out on my own terms. When I can't compete and win anymore, then that's when I'll hang up the sticks. But for now, I'm, I'm still one of the best. One more time for the Los Angeles Gorillas. They are your champs! I told you. I told you. Like, I don't expect any team to really ever win with a sub again, at least not anytime soon. And going from losers round one to winning was also just like another thing in its own right. There's so many parts of the story that you're gonna like always remember. So I think what's maybe the best run and it's gonna be one that I think a lot of us will remember for a while. I keep thinking that we've seen it all in COD. I keep thinking that everything's been done. The Minnesota miracle of what the the rocker come back against Toronto Ultra. That may never happen again. We've already peaked. Somehow, the cool duty league finds a way. The players find new resolve. They find new purpose. We will always see amazing comebacks. We will always see these miraculous moments, these historic victories. Is this one an absolute banger that we're going to put in the books forever? God, yeah. But it's far from over.